Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you a quick, easy and free way to uh, plan a layout with realistic constraints. So we're going to be using any rail and uh, I'll show you just a, kind of a, the way I did it um, to come up with my layout plan based on my experiences with uh, any rail. Now the reason I want to do this video is we all kind of run into the same problems I think um, when we're layout planning because you just you always just assume you can fit all these things into a specific area that you have to work with and the reality is we're modeling something that's um, the subdivisions are measured like by a hundred miles um, and we're met we're modeling like just a tiny little fraction of it we don't realize how much room uh, especially like the larger scales like HO and up um, take up in your uh, allocated layout space so um, some, ex some of the things that I learned, um, and I, I did the same thing on my last layout as this one. I just assumed I'd be able to cram all this stuff in. And uh, then reality comes, to, when, when it comes time to build, um, if you haven't done some realistic planning, you can run into problems um, when you try forcing yourself to, to uh, squeeze stuff in. So this layout um, that I'm going to build... It's a bit, this plan has been a long time coming. I spent a lot of hours on this plan, and uh, even with a fairly large space to work with, like uh, the main area is 40 by 30 down in my basement, I still ran into a ton of constraints. Just trying to uh, trying to keep the curve radiuses at 36 and stuff, um, it's just really really hard. And I ended up having to make some compromises with my aisle width and and stuff, but. Uh, the advantage of using any rail or any other um, computer software program for layout planning is that it keeps you honest and uh, it just tells you how it's actually going to be when it, you don't uh, when you do it by hand you kind of you kind of have a tendency to uh, or at least I do anyway to do some wishful thinking and uh, plan a little bit more into your area than you can fit so hopefully this um, this video will be able to help you guys out and avoid some of the pitfalls that I ran into. Um, when I started layout planning for the second time. So we'll go through it uh, step by step and we're not going to go into this type of detail on a track plan, we're just going to plan for the constraints and I'll show you an easy way, um, you can still do the pencil and paper but we're just going to use the the track software to do our curve radiuses and um, that way it will keep us honest when we're planning. Okay so the first thing we're going to have to do is um, download the free demo version of any rail and like I said you can use any track planning software you like but I like any rail because they really try to make it simple and easy to use see there they're even their slogan the easiest model railroad design software and uh, this isn't a plug for them I've I discovered this on my own I tried a couple different ones and uh, I just liked any rail so this is the one I use okay so we're gonna download the uh, the free demo it's another good thing about this uh, this method of planning for constraints. You can just use this free demo. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're going to go further with it, uh, this lets you put down 50 pieces of track. And so when I first started, this is what I did. And then I ended up buying the full version, which was about 50 bucks or 55 bucks when I first uh, when I bought it because I wanted to keep going and uh, learn how to do more uh, planning because you can go further with it if you want to do curve easements and stuff like that. So. But for our, but for today, all we need is the uh, the demo version. So go ahead, download the uh, any rail any rail for free trial. Um, it's good on uh, all PCs. It, unfortunately, it doesn't work for Mac. But uh, any of you PC guys, this is uh, will work for you. So go ahead, download and install the free demo for any rail. Okay, once you got your demo uh, installed, go ahead, open it up. So this is the first page that fires up when we open up uh, any rail. Okay, so we're going to start um, to use, for example, I'm going to use my old layout and my old layout space just because it's uh, pretty familiar with that area. And lots of you guys um, remember what that layout was like and uh, how big it was. So, Okay, so the first thing we'll do is uh, go over to this tab settings. Make sure your measurement system is in the system you want to use. I was kind of grew up with inches so I use inches and it works well for the 12 foot, 12 inch grid set it to English fractional units inches um, and then the grid size I make it 12 here that way you're looking at uh, one foot grid kinda you can do whatever you want it, it's just that's how I visualize stuff so 
Okay, so then now in the width, now this, remember this is inches, so my old layout was, uh, it was the, the, the layout space, the basement was t um, 20 by 10. So we'll go 240 for the width and the depth 120. That gives us 20 by 20 feet by 10 foot area. Just zoom out here. Okay, there's, that's the space that I had to work with uh, my old layout. Now remember, I didn't use up the whole basement because we had uh, a TV down there and a couch. So we'll just go and uh, so just to give you some a little bit of perspective before we start. Here's my old layout, and that's the space that it occupied in that uh, layout room. So I planned this layout on paper. I never used uh, planning software or anything, and. Uh, one thing I ran into problems right away was uh, going with 24 inch curves. That was kind of a mistake. And in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have built um, a water wing type layout in this small of a space. I probably should have tried something else, but hindsight's always 2020. I don't think I'd ever go again with uh, 24 inch radius curves, but uh, that's how that was the space it took up. So let's uh, just hypothetically plan a new layout in this space. So what the easiest thing to do is just go up here to insert. Now you can make these different shapes. So we're going to add a circle here, and I want to I want the circle radius to be 36 because that's the radius I'm planning for my next layout. It's, um, a friend of mine he had all 36 inch radius curves. That was his minimum, and uh, trains just looked and ran uh, beautifully on that layout. So let's just try that hypothetically. So you just um, make the radius 36. Click this add circle and just click on the screen. All right, so that's a 36 inch radius curve. You can already see, like this is a 20 foot by 10 foot space. And this 36 inch radius curve takes up a huge amount of space. So what I do, um, this is really for the visualization and just kind of the brainstorming of layout. This is all that I, that I used. Because this is my constraint. This is the smallest size of uh, circle I want to go. Of course, if we increase the radius, this, this circle is going to get bigger. So we look here. Okay, yeah, that fits there and there. So this, the quarter section you need, you only need a quarter of this to make the curve. That'll work there. Come around here. Um, so with this uh, layout space, I could make an around the outside layout with a dock under. Um, if you remember in my old layout, the entrance was here to the basement. There was about I don't know, six or seven foot. Uh, so in this case, you'd have to have a dock under. But a 36 will work if, if you want to go around the outside. I can tell just by this. Now if I wanted to make a peninsula and increase the run length even more, I'm not going to be able to use this 36 rate. I can already tell just by putting this circle here. I know I'm going to want 12 or 18 inches on each side for, my, for the bench work there. There's no way I'm going to be able to walk in between this. So already this is what planning for constraints is all about. So I already know now my 36 inch radius won't work as a peninsula in here so let's get rid of that and let's have we'll compromise a bit let's go down to a 30 and see if that fits 30 will fit but it'll be pretty tight so if you wanted to make some compromise and you'd be closer to like say 14 15 inches on your uh, bench work here and here that'll work so okay well I guess we could have a peninsula here Let's uh, go ahead and throw a little track in here and see what happens. So, so the the, uh, the planning for constraints, guys, it's all about just using these these because these are the biggest. Your curve radius is what kind of dictates how much track you're going to be be able to put. And the bigger the curve radius you want to do, the less your the less room you're going to have to work with because the curves are more sweeping. If you want to go down to it, just to show you the difference. Um, Let's just go ahead and put an 18 inch radius in here. So you can see that this is a 30. You put that there. That's so I'm visualizing the outer edge here on this quarter of this circle. That's how much room it will take up to make that curve at a 30. You see when you when you put an 18 in there, how much more width you have to work with in this area. It takes up much less space. However, now you've got a very tight turning radius that a lot of equipment won't run on. OK, 
Okay, so let's get these out of here and I'll show you how to now you can use track to, uh, to visualize it even further. So go ahead, go to track libraries tab up here. Um, I just use microengineering because that's what I want to use on my next layout. So you, this little box pops up, so you got, uh, if you hover here, here's a 36 inch piece of uh, Code 83 flex track. So click that, piece pops up, right click it, and select Curve Flex. So we're going to go 36, I'm sorry, we'll go angle here, we'll go 90, and the curve radius will be 36. There we go. So this is what I was talking about, the quarter of that circle. A circle is just a really quick way to visualize it because you can visualize um, a 90 degree curve or a 180 if you're doing a peninsula um, very quickly by using those circles. Okay, so we'll just copy this and then we'll just paste another one in there. Remember, we're just trying to get the constraints, guys. We're not trying to uh, plan the whole railroad here. We just want to know what we can fit, what we can actually fit realistically in this space at our curve radius that we want to work with. Okay, and I'll do one more and that'll give us our outer edges. Okay, now the peninsula is 30, so let's curve that flex, angle 90 again. I think 90 is the, the maximum it will let you do. There's 30, so we'll copy that. And then to uh, connect the flex track, you just drag this one and touch it to the edge of the other one, and it just connects them for you. So to turn it, you click this piece, this little green thing here, just pull it around to where you're happy. Okay, we'll put the curve radius somewhat in the middle, Could probably go further than that. Try to maintain your aisles around three feet or so. Okay. Now I this looks good, but I'm seeing one problem here. We're not gonna at a 36 inch radius here, we're not gonna be able to come back around. I can already see this happening. So it, here's another constraint we ran into already. So if I go with another 36 piece here, you can see how much room that 36 takes to get back around 180 degrees. It takes up a lot of space. So let's do one more for the other side. Okay, so if I want to have 36 inch curve radiuses on this back, on these two back curves here to go into the peninsula, I'm going to need to put some, uh, there's only one way to do this and it'll be to elevate it and have the track go over itself. So now we're working with grades. So if I cut this piece off, you just select cut, right click it and select cut flex here, cut flex here and then delete. Okay, that's more like it. Now I can connect this piece coming in here and if I run it on a grade the whole way, it probably could do 1 to 2% grade starting here. This this track will be above and uh, start the grade going down and it'll go all the way down the peninsula and around, come back this way and connect here. And then I can know I can still have my large 36 inch radius curves here. So this Guys, if I wanted to do um, like a long run, a long main track run layout like this, these are my constraints. I've over, this is, what's it taking us, five minutes to do this? Okay, so now that we've got it to this stage, guys, this is pretty much all I need now to go ahead and start planning in the rest. And the rest can be added in with a pencil um, just by drawing the lines here. And you know you're not going to try and cheat and stuff too much in that you can't fit because these are your constraints. So you can go ahead and draw all the sidings and turnouts and switches and everything you want. I would suggest going a little bit further and if you're going to do sidings um, use the, the any rail turnouts because they're actual real size. Um, you won't so you know how much space they take up but uh, you can do whatever you want. This is kind of just the main thing that will uh, help you keep yourself honest when you're planning. So uh, all we do now is go up here so go up here in the corner, click File, and uh, Export As. It'll give you a few options. So we want to export it as a picture, that way we can print it off. So you go Picture, that will bring up 
and that'll bring up your options here and uh, I don't really mess with it uh, with anything here because it's kind of just all I've ever done is uh, just go click OK it usually has the right settings so you click that it'll give you some options so here it shows you it's going to export it as a, J, as a JPEG you can see it's exporting it as a JPEG you save it so once you've uh, exported it as a JPEG image you can go ahead and use your printer to print that off and you have now have a workable piece of paper that's the size of your layout space that you have allocated and uh, you have the curve radiuses here that you want to work with so I hope this was helpful guys um, it's pretty much just two easy steps guys you just remember at the start well you you use the um, the circle here and so one one other note um, that during that first step when we use the uh, circles another thing you can do that's really good with this layout planning software is uh, say somebody else has a furnace or something in their basement and you make that um, say three feet by three feet so 36 by 36 and click add rectangle and click the screen and the furnace is down in this corner now you can see we have all sorts of other plan uh, problems to work around and uh, using that same method we can uh, we can make it happen around these and work around different issues like a staircase or a hot water tank or furnace or something and you can put the exact dimensions in this is the advantage this isn't quad paper and this isn't you guesstimating with you drawing on a piece of paper this gives you the exact measurements and you're working with the exact perimeter with actual things to, that are in scale so that's what's important and remember if you, if you have an oblong basement or something um, that's an L shape or it's weird you can go make the rectangle or the square as big as possible and then you can just draw in your uh, Say you have an L shape uh, right here where there's a little cutoff or something where you can add a line. And uh, just make it a thick line and then it shows up like a wall would. Like two inches thick. And uh, this area would just be off limits. And now, see, you now you have some a whole other thing to plan around. But uh, get your outside, uh, get your perimeter measurements. Make sure they're accurate, and then make sure your perimeter on any rail is very exactly like it is in in the real thing. And uh, you won't have any problems uh, planning your layout with uh, real constraints and uh, keeping yourself in check and not uh, not cramming too much in where it won't fit so hopefully this helps guys uh, for me it was a real time saver once I finally figured this out it took me a long time um, another added bonus when you're playing around with any rail like this you learn how to do different things with it and uh, I actually became fairly proficient uh, using it and was able to plan the rest of my layout with uh, curve easements and everything uh, built in so that's one th one way to just kinda get your get your feet wet doing when you start uh, working with a layout planning software like this. So I hope that was helpful guys. Uh, if you have any questions don't don't hesitate to ask. Um, AnyRail is a, is a great program. It's quite user friendly. They've also got a forum online that's got like 2,000 members too. So if you if you're just starting out I suggest uh, sign up to become a member of that uh, AnyRail forum and uh, you can get some help from some real experts. Uh, in this track planning software. Uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to help you out. Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.